Hello, everyone. This is Leanne Lindsay, editor of Tinsel and Time, a site that celebrates Sparks conversation and awareness in support of the film and movie industry, among other things. And today I'm joined by an old friend, Leslie Rivera. Les. Hey, <laughs> hey Les. We met at a screenwriting class a while back. Like, I'm not going to say how long back, but, um, it, you know, it was at the University of the Arts. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we reconnected in the last two or three years on social media and have been keeping in touch on each other's projects. Les is a Puerto Rican-born writer, director, producer who has since we met, made a number of low-budget independent short films and documentaries. He's a winner of the Philadelphia Film Festival's Philly Pitch and a Sundance Screenwriters Lab semifinalist. Congratulations on that, by the way. Thank you. Uh, Les is also an educator of low-budget filmmaking techniques. So we'll talk more about that in our interview, but be sure to check out his YouTube channel, Les El Blantino Cine Ninja, which uh-huh. is full of video tutor- tur- t- uh, tutorials <laughs> that teach movie magic. Um, but most recently, Les has been working on a five-part limited series called Poppy Ramirez vs. Giant Scorpions which is a crazy fun, high energy throwback to the B-movie era of super creatures. Now, um, Tinsel and Tyne audiences already know I have a continuing series called Five Questions, where I get filmmakers and actors to answer the same respective five questions and show how completely different each artist answers those questions. But today's five questions have been modified specifically to Les. So Les, shall we start? Yo, let's, let's get it going. All right. So in a nutshell, what was the main inspiration for you wanting to become a filmmaker in the first place? Um, so way, way back in the day, even before you and I were in that screenwriting class, so even long, long ago, <laughs> um, I was in a dance company. I was a core company member of Philadelphia-based Rennie Harris Pure Movement. It was a hip-hop I remember band. Rennie Harris very well. And, you know, we got to tour all over the world. I was very fortunate to do that. And in one of our trips, um, you know, you got, you got to read something on the plane, especially way back then when, like, the whole, like, technology is not like it is now where everybody has, like, a screen uh, right behind the seat of, of, you know, uh, in front of you. So I would buy books for our plane rides. I had a very long one coming up. And I went to the library, um, and I found Robert Rodriguez's Rebel Without a Crew. And it is a book. It is essentially a diary on the making of his first movie, um, his first feature film, El Mariachi. And really? Yeah, and the way he explained the process was like a sport. Like, the more you do it, the better you get at it. You don't sit around thinking about it too much. You don't theorize. It's just about doing, doing, doing. And, and, Robert, not, ha- and not waiting for somebody to give you permission. Exactly, exactly. And, and prior to being a dancer, I was a gymnast. So, so I was like, so that concept, like I understood that concept because the kind of sports that I was in, you know, the dancing that I did it was very physical and you could, not, um, you could not move forward unless you were constantly working. So it was a concept that I, I understood very clearly. And I always loved the movies, but back then, like, the thought of like picking up a camera and making a movie that was like non-existent, like up until that book, at least for me, up until that book. And there was just something about reading the book that, um, that made filmmaking a reality. And it just like, it, it turned the switch on like this because I was never, I never aspired to be a filmmaker but I always loved movies. I always loved movies. And I read that book and I was like, wait a minute. You mean I can get a (laughs) camera and a VCR and just start making movies? And this was before you had like an iPhone or anything. This was just- I literally, my first camera was a super VHS camera 
um, it was about this big, like, you know, let's use my face. <laughs> Literally, the camera was this big wow. on the shoulder. It had to go on your shoulder. It was that heavy. It, it like VHS tapes. You know how big VHS yes. tapes are? Yes. That is what went into the camera. That was my first camera. And I would edit from that camera to a VCR. That's how I would make my edits by hitting record and pause. It wasn't even, it wasn't, there was no like finessing with it. You just kind of like, Editing was like figuring out like, okay, how much of a delay is there between the time I hit pause and the machine decides to do whatever it needs to do? <laughs> you can imagine like editing. Just start and what, stop, start it, and stop. It, it, wasn't about, <laughs> it wasn't about how you wanted to, the edit to go. It was about that, but it was also about like, did it happen right that time? Did I hit the button at the right millisecond that time, you know? So I made a whole bunch of films like that, and and that's that's where my filmmaking journey started. But see, that's like film school. It's it's you know your own personal film school. I love that. Exactly. So I know that you have a very unique studio to make your films, but why don't you tell our audience a bit more about this location and your process? Well, unfortunately, I don't have that studio at the what? current moment. Well, I'll tell you what happened. So um, my wife and I had been in Philly for close to 20 years and we have a daughter and around the time that she was two years old, we decided, hey, we want to be closer to family. My wife is from Raleigh, North Carolina. So we moved down south and our like in between apartment was this teeny tiny apartment, 650 square feet, three people in there. I mean, it was tight. And mm. like, what am I going to make in there? Like, it was very, like, I, I didn't even have enough space for my equipment. So um, at first we were going to keep all, you know, I was going to keep all my stuff at my mother-in-law's. Um, and then I heard about this storage unit uh, facility that was allowing bands to rent units so that they could rehearse. And then I heard from a friend who had a unit, he was an artist, he had his art studio in there. So I was like, well, shoot, I'll be the, the filmmaker with the studio, right? <laughs> and so I got myself a unit. I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do in it because this was a very new to me, but the idea of having a space um, that wasn't my living room, because in this little apartment, there was really no living room. And, and you can't start. probably even think like you're not thinking creatively because there's too much going on to people on. to, you know, you're trying to be a dad, you're trying to be a husband. It's and I could, do, I could do the living room. I could do the living room in Philly prior to having a kid, you know, but uh -huh. with the kid, the living room is that's, that's no more. You can't throw up a green screen and a bunch of lights. Like, that, she's, no. she's coming through regardless. <laughs> there's enough obstacles that you're like don't go there don't go there i don't want to add to the obstacle course right mm -mm. so so i have this space and i'm like oh man what a like it's here and i wanted to i wanted to start you know i wanted to do something in there and two weeks passed and then on a friday night around 11 30 i decided to go to this space you know, my daughter was sleeping, my wife was chilling. And uh, I was like, honey, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go to the studio and putz around a little bit. <laughs> and um, as soon, I, I'm in the studio and I'm like, what should I do? And I noticed um, a scale model car um, was coming out of one of the boxes, right? And then I thought about the, the Twilight Zone, I thought about black and white. <sighs> And I was like, oh, let me do like this, one of those mysterious scenes in the desert where like you hit something and then you're like, oh, what did I hit? And then I go out and I explore what I hit and it turns <laughs> out like this monstrous sound is surrounding me. And then all of a sudden you're in this like very scary situation. And so I filmed that um, in the storage unit that night. It didn't take that long because like, okay. Once you put down the camera and you're pointing it at the green screen, you don't have to do anything else. You're just like changing the lighting. So your camera position like basically stays the same. stay in the same position. Yeah and, about, yeah, and it's about you switching and like getting your different angles by 
moving the things in front of you. Ah, so, so it's went. not like you have to have two people. You don't have Ooh, to have, a, yeah, 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 that's very, important. Very quickly. And we're talking about like midnight, one o'clock at the storage unit. Nobody was there. So the, the scene is completely visual, but like it also helped to know that at that time, nobody's there because then, you know, if I needed to film dialogue scenes, like I was going to get decent sound for the exception of like, it was like one of those climate controlled ones. So everyone's oh, okay. going to walk yeah. out of the, the AC. Well, I would hope in. so, because you'd be in there to sweat and otherwise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so that was the beginning of, of, of this journey um, of creating an entire movie inside of a storage unit. I love that. I think it's very ingenious. I mean, I know you got the idea from other people using this the storage area for artistic endeavors but still i hadn't heard anybody else do it to to make a movie so it's super cool and that's how poppy ramirez versus the giant scorpions got underway but yep. you've had so many twists and turns because like it's been two years since i saw it right or is mm -hmm. it been a year at times i just can't keep track now but i think it's been two years and then you know you've it was going to be a movie then it was like a, a five-part series and then i guess it's back to a movie again yeah, well, because yeah. you have a screening coming up um at the Salem horror fest which is exciting in october mm -hmm. so um give us a little background on the iteration and how this uh, movie um evolved okay so once i figured out that i could film scenes very quickly um i just started creating stuff and I accumulated about 20 to 25 minutes of material and I strung it all together. The only, the only thing that, that made it seem cohesive was the fact that they were all in black and white and they were all like, kind of like moody. The lighting was moody. It was very like twilight zone-ish. And it was like in a motel room in the desert. The scorpion yeah. wasn't even in there yet, right? So I take those 20 minutes and I send it to the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival and I send them a note that says, hey, I have this feature film um, and here's the first 20 minutes. And to my surprise, they said, yeah, send us the film. We would love to screen it. So now I am <laughs> three, months, three months away from the festival having to, I don't even have a script, having to write a script, film it, direct it, score it. All you have is atmosphere at this point. Say again? All you have is atmosphere, really, at this point. Exactly. So, but it was good because it, it, it got me to finish something. I always wanted to make a feature film. And, you know, that, that was the beginning of, like, like completing that, that chapter in my life so that I can start right. another one. But um, so the so the film that I ended up making in those three months ended up being a, a ninety minute cut, screened at the festival. It was way too long. Oh boy! Um, but people really enjoyed it. Like it still had a lot of heart. I think that is the only thing that made it watchable was the heart, and it has some pretty cool action scenes. It does have cool action scenes, but I I think you're right that you know you have the, the husband and wife relationship in there really kind of takes it away from it just being a, a B kind of fun movie. Well, the, the thematically for me, the movie is about um, what happens to you as a father when you learn you're going to be, uh, a, you know, you're going to be a father, like, uh, especially when you don't feel like you have your ish together, like financially, mm. um, uh and just like what, what like you're just like am i doing the right thing right now in order to be able to provide for this child you know right. it was, these are very real things that were going on in my life when my wife told me that she was pregnant like i wasn't i didn't think i was in a financial place that was going to be able to support a child i didn't think that i was mature enough to be able to uh to do this you know what i'm saying so i get it I, so I tried to put that into the movie. That to me is like, uh, you know, the, the, the heart of the movie, right? And, and all these other things, the universe just kept throwing things at me. So like the scorpion just happened to come to fruition because like I was looking on, on Amazon for something that um, could be like radio controlled or could move. 
so that I didn't have to like stop motion animate every single oh, scene. The, like every time. tiny, yeah. Exactly, and the same thing with like like three D computer generated effects. At the level that I'm, I am, I didn't want to present something that would look like cheesy in that manner. You know what I'm saying? Like there's there's stop motion cheesy, which like I really love, and then there's like cheesy CGI that just cheapens a movie. Right. Looking for for something that would help um help me so i wasn't like animating uh, a stop motion in the you know a, a creature i didn't even know it would be a scorpion or anything i just happened to find remote controlled scorpions on amazon <laughs> and i bought like five of them and that's that's yeah. where the whole idea of like the giant scorpions came in and then on top of that my daughter's birthday is November 1st, and she is a Scorpio. Aha! So I like, oh, I, I, know totally, that part. I ah. totally have to. This is, this is the direction I'm going. And that's how the movie. It seemed came. like a sign then. Yeah, everything <laughs> kind of came together that way. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, it's like, yeah, it's that's, <laughs> that's how it went down. I don't, I don't really, it's. It's funny because it's like, to me, it's really not that deep. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. it's very like, it's my experience, you know? Um, and, and like, there are times, you know, I'm, I play it off sometimes. I'm like, yeah. And then like, my daughter is a Scorpio. And then like, <laughs> this image signifies this and signifies that. But like, honestly, like, I was just working. I had to get this movie done. And things were just... I was just anything that kind of like fell into place. I just went with it because I didn't have time to overthink it. I had to get it done. So does that mean that you done. never did create a script then? You just kept doing it more? I did. I did create a script. Um, you did? But it, Actually, was like, it was very loose. I mean, okay. the original script and what I have now as a movie are, are very different from each other. So you didn't use the outlining techniques that they taught us at the U of Arts? <laughs> I'm afraid I did not. <laughs> you know, for me, filmmaking is is imagery, um, and it's very hard for me to get that imagery on the page. But that is another thing I love about working inside of a, of the storage unit by myself is that I get to work as a painter, and mm -hmm. like whenever I made something, it gave me ideas for other things that I could either immediately do right there and then in the moment or yeah. kind of prepare to do like in another day or two. So the process, because I'm in one location, I'm not worried about weather. Um, and it's, it's all like com compositions, like, you know, like basically it's the, 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 the imagery is, it's essentially just the actor in front of a green screen. Um, the miniatures, which is like either the cars or, you know, some, some of the miniatures are like um, cardboard, pieces of cardboard with like dollhouse um, wallpaper on them. Okay. Um, and then like stock footage backgrounds, right? So like I didn't have to do everything all at once, you know, like if I needed like, um, you know, a piece of, of the image, I could wait like a couple of days before it arrived or for me to build it and, uh, so and work around it, work around it. So I was able to continually, oh. continually be working. But in that continuation, um, the script just continued to be developed, you know? So it, it's, in a way it was like jazz. Like it was like very free form. And yeah. I, really, I really enjoyed that process. But then that's what, brings the creativity out and it, and it gives you confidence as you see it working out you know and and the universe responds to that kind of thing you know because there's just like a lot of positivity going on when you're having fun mm -hmm. oh i love that so um what's been the most memorable response you've received so far from people who've seen poppy ramirez the most memorable and this is this is what let me know that like the you know because i could feel that the movie was long at the philadelphia latino film festival back in 2018 but and i'll never forget this there was a dad there with two of his kids two of his his young sons okay. and um 
I forgot exactly the scene, but I remember him putting his arms around his two sons and like bringing them closer together to him. And I was like, this movie working, this movie works. Like, because that is what I wanted. Uh, more than like the scares or the thrills or anything, that is ultimately what I wanted to get out of that movie. So when I saw that, that, that hit me. And that was like this, that, that is what I need to continue to work towards. Um, so we have just one more question uh, in the series. And so I want to know what are your top five favorite movies from a mix of genres, whatever, whatever you like. And then your top five from what you love about B movies. Oh man. Okay. All right. So it's, this is one of those questions where like you think about them and you it's think hard, about, isn't it? Yeah, you think you know all the answers, but then they keep changing. Mm -hmm. that, that makes sense because like new things are being presented to the world. Um, but the stuff I like is still all the old stuff. So, so okay, so here we go. Um, <laughs> Flash Gordon, the 1980s version scored by Queen. Flash, ah, save every one of us. I absolutely oh my love God. that movie. I mean, the, like, it's so fake looking that I love it. I love it. Everything's so shiny and theatrical, like, yeah, and I'm not I'm not going in order of like my preference because I, okay. like I I like all these things equally. The next one would be They Live by John Carpenter. It's oh. uh it stars Rhodey Piper, like he was a wrestler back in the day. Keith David is in it, and oh, I, I absolutely love this movie. It's about um this guy puts on shades and he sees the world the world for what it really is, and oh. like. So just picture like, um, so first of all, there's like these aliens in it that look like skulls, right? Um, and they're the ones running the world, the world. So it's like our politicians and the wealthy. And then like, if you picture like, you're looking at a magazine rack and you just see like normal magazines like Time, Newsweek, uh, uh, National Geographic, you, you know, just normal every day how we see things. You put on the glasses and there's like, um, you know, the magazines all of a sudden become like all white and it's like just word, like one word, like submit or consume, like all these things. So it's about like subliminal um, control and things like that. I, it, it's, it's, I really love this film. Another John Car Carpenter film that I love is Escape from New York. <laughs> I've not seen it, but I, I'm familiar. Especially, especially the, um, there's a scene in there with a glider that as a little kid, oh my God, I loved it so much. Um, uh, uh, Bruce Lee, Fist of Fury. Okay. Um, I was a big Bruce Lee fan. I would... That yeah. makes sense, especially since you were a physical person in a young at a young age. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would make nunchucks out of the, like the the paper towel like cardboard rollers once they were set. <laughs> I would make nunchucks out of those nunchucks, like jumping on the couch and fighting a bunch of enemies. <laughs> um, That's good. And then, um, so a fifth one. Um, I'm really. I am a really big fan of 2001 Space Odyssey. Really? Yeah. Now, not because you feel like you should be, because some people just feel like, oh, really? that's a movie because that I should put on my list. I'll tell you why. I'm not, you know, I like Tarantino films. Like, the dialogue is great. Mm -hmm. But not every film is that, dialogue-wise. Um, and I always feel like filmmaking... It's filmmaking. It's not a play. And I feel like a lot of movies are plays. Ah. So I, I actually respond more to, to images. I don't need people talking. Like, that is not an image that does anything to me. Like, oh, a wow, we're response. completely opposite then. I am yeah. so about the dialogue-heavy movies. Okay. Yeah, that's not for me. So 2001 is just images. And I love that. That makes sense. I absolutely. And because, I, so silent films is actually, I love silent films. Like silent films are my jam. I would, 
I would stay up till like two o'clock in the morning on Sunday nights watching T uh, Turner Classic Movies because that was their silent film night. It was Sunday nights starting at midnight. And I would just stay up watching these silent films and I just loved them because like everything is, is just images. So visual. Another yeah, filmmaker who worked that way. And um, again, like I can't sit through all the films, but I really like, I can take his imagery in chunks is, um, um, Dark, uh, Tai Ch- no, it's a Russian filmmaker, Tychowski. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, which... He did the original Solaris. Um, he made a movie called Stalker um, and a bunch of other like crazy films that the images are just out of this world. So it's that's like... what I'm about. I can't, I'm not saying that I hate watching people talking, but I feel no, like... No, but you're just not about like the narrative uh three-act structure, that type of thing is not as important to you. No, I like three-act structure. Like, I think you can do that with just images and many wonderful films have done that too. Um, But, like, leave that in the theater. Leave people talking in the theater. Like, you have an opportunity to not have to do that and have people have an experience with the film. So, for me, like, images, sound design uh music like that for me is like cinema you know that's to me like you have those tools and you know that's because that's what it was that's what it was in silent films and i feel like it just got cut short like the minute that they introduced the ability to have people talking like a lot of filmmaking became about that instead of like imagery and visual and 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 telling your story with visual images Mm -hmm. and there's i mean there are some crazy and wonderful and awesome images that silent filmmakers were putting up on the screen and like techniques that they were starting to develop to tell their stories and then the minute like and then the talkies came in yeah that that's not that it stopped because like some of the better filmmakers were able to uh, figure out um, how to how to do both, how to like not have talking be the only way that the movie is explained or progressed or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, but as, as an overall, that is something that happened to filmmaking. Uh, I could see that. So no, wait, so no. what were your five Bs though? The ones that you can educate us on that we may not have seen. Um. Although some of your favorite movies I haven't seen. Right. Well, well, well <laughs> before we go on to those, um, um, I just wanted to say really quick, another movie that I really enjoyed that is a more modern movie, but it's a movie that is like primarily just images. It's, uh, the name is escaping me. I'm trying to like Google it right now. <sighs> um, but it's starring Robert Redford. He's like stuck on his sailboat. It's called- Oh, uh- all is lost all is lost that's what it is yes i absolutely love that movie and that is a movie with with the three-act structure that is a very linear movie it it is it opened the philadelphia film festival maybe like five years ago i think okay okay something like that but but you understood that movie right right and you were engaged right there's other movies. <laughs> you really do like dialogue. Well, I mean, no, but I mean, if you take that one next to um, Ryan Reynolds and Buried, because they're both movies where it's just one person in like a similar scene the whole way through, mm-hmm. Buried is 10 times better for me. Just, it's, okay. it's just not boring. <laughs> okay. The Robert yeah. Redford one has a lot of boring moments to me. See, I'm I'm captivated <laughs> by the, the 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 storytelling being told by imagery. I really love that, and the sound design and all that. I really love that. All right, all right. So let's move on. <laughs> we want the top five B movies. Yes. Okay. So I guess you know Flash Gordon is a. It's a well, movie. yeah. Technically, that is. Yeah. Um, but I can add some more films that I that I love. Some of the cheesy films. So <laughs> Monster Squad was a movie I loved That's as a, a child. Great title. Monster Squad um uh attack of the killer clowns is another great uh, i feel I like i should see that that gets brought up a lot 
It's I need to see that. Hilarious and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> um, let me see. Fright Night. I really loved Fright Night. Oh, okay. Um, let me see. Um, wow. I'm trying to think like those early films that as a little mm. child, I was just right, like, just oh, out. by the way, check this out. What's that? Um, so my parents had me when I when they were like 20, both of them, very young. And um, I remember at three years old being at the movie theater watching Scarface. What? Was, they took you to Scarface? And, oh, and so they were I, too young to be parents. And I remember, so I remember that shot, that uh, oh chainsaw in the shower scene vividly. Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> it's Scarface gorgeous. <laughs> I don't think, but that's the funny thing. I don't think Scarface scarred me. Um, I, I, I'll tell you what scarred me that I, my parents also took me to. And please, please, people, do not judge my parents. They're wonderful people. They were in their 20s. Like, we all do dumb stuff in our 20s. <laughs> Anyways, the thing that scarred me actually was um, the Charles Brunson movie, um, where he's like a vigilante. Like I, I got taken to the movies for that. Oh gosh. Oh. Um, mm. And I wouldn't even watch that now. Uh, <laughs> so I certainly wouldn't have wanted to see that as a kid. Really? Yeah. Because like, <laughs> I, I think at that age, I could tell like that they were that they were doing that thing they like to do with black bodies. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I just, I wasn't, I wasn't with that. That really, yeah. that really did bother me. Um, and, and stuck with you. And stuck with me, yeah. Wow. Uh, but, okay, wait, I think I have two more titles <laughs> to give you. Okay, what's that? You know, I really did enjoy Tremors. Oh, I like Tremors. Okay, yeah. that's what I do like. Yeah, I did like Tremors. Kevin Bacon. What's, oh my goodness, see, I this is how I know I'm getting older because I just I forget. Yeah, it's like it goes right out of your head. I know. Believe me. What was me. the other movie with where the little fuzzy aliens with the big teeth? Fuzzy aliens. I mean Gremlins, right? No, not Gremlins. No, no. Okay. I do. I do love. Yeah, Critters. And I. It's really called love, Critters. I really love Critters. Yeah. Critters, <laughs> I don't Gremlins, think I know I it. What? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that image at all. <laughs> it looks like where the wild things are. It has that kind it of look. look like that, but they're 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 like small. They're like the size of um if I remember, they're like the size of like beach balls. Okay. Terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. More terrifying than the clowns? Uh no, the clowns No, the clowns are they, you know, clowns that, always yeah. get you. I'll give you a few others now that I'm thinking about it, like Troll, the first Troll movie from back in the day. Mm, no, definitely haven't seen that. It's cool. Like, this apartment starts becoming like the magical land. It's, oh, it's so cool um, as a little kid. Now, there's a documentary about Troll 2. Do you, are you aware of this documentary? No, what? Yeah. Troll 2 apparently is like the worst movie ever, and they make a <laughs> documentary about it. Um, I'll, I'll I thought that movie. Leprechaun movie with Jennifer Aniston was supposed to be the worst movie. Oh, Troll Two was worse. <laughs> really? Was worse. And uh, Legend, the one with Tom Cruise, I, I really liked oh, that. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Um. Actually, my sister was watching that uh, just like two weeks ago, and I walked in, and I was like, "Oh, I haven't seen this since I came out, probably." So consider a B movie. I don't know. I mean, it's like ah, uh, kind of. I mean, like, yeah, it's close. Tom Cruise, and it's like yeah, it's so uh, young, and his teeth are all jacked up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think that was part of the appeal. <laughs> those are good ones. Those, yeah, those uh, are not on everybody's list. Okay. Well, Les, it's been so much fun catching up, and. Um, I wish you well at the film festivals. Thank you. Um, have a lot of fun. I'm sure you're going to get great feedback. And uh, yeah, we shall uh, talk again soon.
Thank you for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And you, it's, it's funny, like, after all these years to reconnect again and we're still in the same field. I it's, mean, it's, it is. Like, like, we both, like, kind of switched over to different things. Um, but I, I think we just both love movies and, and oh, yeah. just want to always be connected some way, you know, just add our part into it. So, and that's what I like to feature, I, you know, everybody who's, who's trying to just make their, their way. <laughs> so Leave a little mark on the world. Yes, exactly. And so oh. important not to, you know, just wait. You just have to dig in there and say, I'm, I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. And you don't know, have to wait to be paid, although that's always nice. But it's it's about expressing yourself and making certain you're being heard, and then people will find you. We live in a very inter- interesting world right now, um, particularly for us filmmakers, where the technology we can do things with the technology now that they couldn't even dream of back then. We have better technology now than Orson Welles did during Citizen Kane. Wow. That's how good our technology is. Like that, yeah. So we have access now. Now, you know, because of that, there's um there's a saturation in the market. But anything you dream of, anything you want to make, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. I mean our phones. Our phones are better than what they had back then. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it is amazing. So there's, you know, it just levels the it. playing field to some extent. To some extent. Um, yeah. No, there's, there's so many genius minds out there that if I could just inspire somebody to just break a little bit through the wall of like, I need this and I need that in order to make my masterpiece or whatever, like, if I can just get them to break through the wall a little bit and just do it and just know that it doesn't have to be perfect, but that somebody or a lot of somebodies will respond to it, yeah. then we're going to be winning. Great way to end our time <laughs> together. I love that. Thank you. Thank and you for having me. <laughs> Take care. All right. Bye-bye.